Now, how many of you American fly tires out there know what a buzzer is? Well, stick around, I'll talk about it. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about today, it's called Shipman's Buzzer. Now, it was created by Dave Shipman in the late 1970s. So what exactly is a buzzer? Well, it's really what we call a midge. If you watch a lot of fly tying videos out there, certainly from the, the folks overseas, you might see them tying a lot of flies they call buzzers. And a lot of what they call a buzzer looks kind of like our zebra midge, and that's all it is. It's just a midge in its pupil or emerging state. And this one today, well, over in the UK, they would call it a damp dry fly. We'd probably just call it a semi-dry fly because it's meant to, you know, get on the surface, but just down in the surface film and sometimes a little bit under it. Maybe the tail end will sink down and it looks like a, a midge that's just about to hatch. And they're typically fished over there in still water and the big reservoirs, anywhere you have trout feeding on the surface. But there's no reason it wouldn't work in some of our still waters over here, or even our, our big rivers that have slower sections. Really, anywhere you're gonna have midges hatching, this thing should work. But it's a really cool looking fly, not hard at all to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go in the vise, a shipman's buzzer. Pretty buggy looking pattern, really cool looking. Now this is a size 12. It's a 1x long dry fly hook. And I'm gonna use black thread. I'll put a base down uh, all the way throughout the flat part of the hook, just to the start of the bend. But then I'm gonna bring it back up front to catch in the first material. And the first thing we're gonna tie in is um, antron fibers, white antron fibers. You could do this with some light colored or white CDC. I've seen plenty of them out there like that. But let's go ahead and catch it in up front. A couple of wraps, take a look at it. We are gonna prop it up a little bit and we'll whip finish under the, the uh, this gill tuft up front. So make sure you leave enough room for that. I think we're fine right there. Now let's just catch this in along the top till we get to the back. Okay, that's fine right there. Now, catch in our tinsel. I'm using a thin mylar, so a gold and silver, and I'm gonna catch it in with the silver side toward the hook because that is what I want to see. I want it to have a silver rib. Now, you could certainly do a gold rib if you want. I'm just picking silver because I think that is gonna look the coolest with the, the dubbed body I'm gonna put on it, which I'm using a caddis green. Now, they've, I've seen plenty of them, and, and reds and browns and all kinds of colors, natural and unnatural. But I'm gonna do this with a, a dubbing loop because I'm using some really tough to work with dubbing. Some synthetic, or imitation, I think it's synthetic, I don't know, uh, seals fur. So how do you make a dubbing loop? I pull my thread out about Oh, five inches, put my finger in it, and then bring it back up here to catch it off. So there's my loop that I'm gonna use. Now I'll go ahead and take a few more wraps toward the back, but I'm gonna part my thread up front just to kind of get it out of the way here. And what you do here, this is my caddis green um, imitation seals fur. I've, I've got one of the, my threads waxed, and I'm just gonna put this in uh, kind of get it as tight as I can on here, but you see this stuff, it doesn't get real tight. And don't be afraid to put it pretty thick. So I've got a, about a four inch noodle, maybe just a little bit more, um, but I'm gonna spin it into a, a fairly tight rope here in just a second. So let's kind of bunch this up right here. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. We'll see in a minute. But I'm gonna use my dubbing spinner. This is my heavy brass spinner right here with a hook on the end. Lots of dubbing spinners are shorter and stubbier and they work just fine. And you don't actually need one, but it certainly makes it easier. So I'm gonna hold my thread and bobbin out of the way and then I'm just gonna give this thing a spin, let it spin around for a few seconds till we get a pretty tight rope. So there's our rope, if you can see that right there. And if you're 
tying this normally, you don't have a camera four inches in front of you and a blue backdrop right behind you, you can probably just spin this whole thing without taking this dubbing spinner off. But I don't have that luxury right now, so I'm gonna have to grab it with this spring-loaded hackle pliers, and I will grab the, the thread close to the end down here, pull it off of my, my spinner, so now I can just spin this right here without letting it slip out of my fingers. That's a, always a, a goal right here. So I'm taking it back just a couple of wraps so I can start the, the dubbed body there toward the back, the back of those white gills there. Now just wrap it up. Okay, now there's our body. You see I got a little bit left, maybe a half inch of this rope left. So if you err to any side, err to the side of making this just a little bit longer, making this dubbing rope a little longer than you need. If, you, if you're too long, you just cut off the excess. If you're too short, you won't have enough dubbing to fill your hook. So that's always keep, good to keep in mind. And that's buggy, and that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and wrap our rib. And up to you how close you want to put these together, but it's really going to help bind this, you know, this little bit unwieldy body in. So I think four or five wraps on this size 12 is probably going to be about right. And if you need to, you know, we'll, you can pick this, these fibers out when we're done with this rib. So let's catch it off at the front with just a couple of wraps. And let's snip off this rib right here. And we're going to trim these in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of wraps to lock it in. Now here's an option you have. Lots of folks will tie it with the front gills sticking up. And some people will tie it with it flat, you know, just kind of like the back. I like sticking up just a little bit better. So I'm going to put a couple wraps underneath it. And I don't want it to stick up, you know straight up so I think that'll work right there and I'm going to whip finish right under that front gill just probably let's see a four turn if we can get it all right we did that looks fine now let's cut these to size and then we'll fluff them out so that front one I need to cut it just a little bit not too much Let's try that right there. And the back one, probably about the same. Maybe just a little bit shorter if you want. And that's, those are the gills right there. But I'm gonna fluff them out. I'll just take my Velcro and rough it up a little bit. Probably don't need to do this, but why not? We're here. And if you want, if your body isn't as buggy as you might want, um, you know, pick it out. Take this and pick it out. But I think that body right there is, is pretty buggy. I kind of like it. And that's it, as simple as this. Uh, shipman's buzzer, or, you know, a hatching midge pupa. But that's it, everybody. A really popular fly in England. The still water's over there. Pretty easy to tie. I'm sure it'll work just as well here in the States. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.